Let's get into it. 68 team bracket for the 2024 NCAA tournament. It's set. Adam Zucker unveiled it on CBS. It's America's most watched network, Network of Stars. I've been talking about it on CBS Sports Network all night. Deadleg been talking about it all night. CBS Sports HQ. Now we're here. And Deadleg, let's just start right at the top. The number one seeds are UConn in the east, Purdue in the Midwest, Houston in the south, North Carolina yeah. in the west. Do you have any issues with the number one seeds? Because I do. I know you do. I might just tee you right back up because uh, I had the one seeds right. You did not. And I know you're going to be angry with the selection committee. So, no, I have no issues with the one seeds. Um, what I do have an issue with is Iowa State being the last two seed. Um, and, you know, listen, just so everyone gets a heads up on something here. We are going to be giving you so much pod content that we're going to every possible angle you could you could want on this bracket. We're going to be giving to you. We're going to have the show tonight. Then Parrish and I are going to be on CBS Sports Network with the pod Monday and Tuesday at two Eastern. Those episodes are also going in your feed. And then we've got an extravaganza episode coming Wednesday. So we're going to get into plenty tonight. But if you're hoping we get into certain things that we don't rest assured, they are very much coming. So with that in mind. Iowa State as the last two is vexing to me, and especially after they destroyed Houston. And I did interview the uh, the chair. Uh, frankly, GP, it's been a mar- as it is, it's been a marathon four days. I like half remember what he told me, and what he didn't. I did ask him about Iowa State. I don't remember what he said to me because I was sure I had people in my ear. I don't. But any any explanation tossed out there for Iowa State to be the final two seed, you will you will never convince me that it's legitimate. I actually do think. This is probably the worst seeding job in the past four tournaments or so. I remember the past two years, we I've sat in this room and talked to you, and we've been like, hey, for the most part, like selection was pretty good, eh, a couple seats. Not this year. Oh, we're back to our old ways, baby. All over the place. Are you kidding me? We'll stick with the top ones, though. I don't have an issue with UNC as a one. I predicted it would be the final one seed. Iowa State's the two, and it's the last two. The floor is yours, sir. I always knew North Carolina um, had a chance to be the fourth number one seed. And I mean, even as the selection show approached, I understood that there was a chance North Carolina would get it. In fact, perhaps a better than not chance that North Carolina would get it. And I understood exactly why. I just think it's wrong. That's it. I understand it. I just think it's totally wrong. Um, you're right. I listened to the committee chair discuss Iowa State. Um, he did it with Adam Zucker and, and Jay Wright and, and, uh, Wally Zerbiak and, uh, uh, Seth Davis, Clark Kellogg, you know, we, we all talked to, we were all in studio tonight. We all talked to a million people. I'm confused on even who was there, but, uh, he didn't answer the question, not sensibly because there's no sensible explanation for it. Like, like if you want to say Iowa state's not the fourth number one seed for whatever reason, fine. But Iowa State has the fourth best resume in the sport. And the idea that you would knock them all the way down to eight and put them in UConn's region, like UConn's the number one overall seed. You shouldn't have a team that's got the fourth best resume resume sitting in your region with you. And just to run through it real quick so people understand, Iowa State and North Carolina have the exact same record, all right? Then you start digging into these records, and this is where you find the differences. Iowa State is 10 and 6 in quadrant one, 6 and 1 in quadrant two, 11 and 0 in quadrant three and quadrant four. Carolina, 9 and 3 in quadrant one, 7 and 4 in quadrant two, 11 and 0 in quadrant three, quadrant four. So Iowa State's got one more quadrant one win than North Carolina, three fewer losses outside of quadrant one than North Carolina. They're higher than North Carolina in the net at Kempom, at Torvik. And Iowa State is also the only team besides UConn, Purdue, and Houston to have more than nine quadrant one wins and less than eight total losses. Still, the Cyclones get punished um, and made to be the last number two seed because I'm assuming, because this was always the explanation anybody else would give you for it, because of a non-league strength of, strength of schedule that ranks in the 300s. I understand non-league strength of schedule is a part of the selection process. I have no idea why it is, because it shouldn't be, particularly when it's used in this way. I understand what happened. It's just ridiculous what happened. The selection process shouldn't be about rewarding anybody for, quote, trying something for trying to schedule aggressively it shouldn't be about punishing people for not trying something you know what it should be about rewarding accomplishment that's it i don't care how you tried to schedule in your non-league or didn't try to schedule i only care about what did you do and what did you not do once the season began 
And if you've clearly put together a body of work that's elite and impressive, why should your non-league strength and schedule matter to the selection committee? In fact, that's not a rhetorical question. That's a question for you because I know you and I differ on this a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you are looking at Iowa State's body of work and you go, my God, they've got 10 quadrant one wins. They're the only team besides the three other number one seeds that were obvious to have that many quadrant one wins and fewer than eight losses. They're ahead of the fourth number one seed in the net, Torvik, Kimpom. But, you know, this non-league strength of schedule doesn't look so good. Why should that be something that kicks Iowa State all the way down to eighth in line? Because the committee has forever rewarded the teams that have sought out to challenge themselves more in the non-conference with the idea that that would, you know, I think – benefit their resume, but also work toward the greater good. And it gives you, this is why Michigan State's a nine, which is a joke. And I also, and I'm going to answer the question, but I said this about an hour before uh, we actually got to the bracket. I did anticipate because the bubble was so wonky that we would have contradictory things in the bracket in terms of, well, this team's non-con SOS was this, and this team, those things don't align. That was going to be inevitable because of the way that the voting process happens and, and when they go through these seed scrubs and different people are going to have different priorities and all that. But even I was stunned to see just how misaligned some of these philosophies were. Um, Iowa State in the non-conference, uh, it beat Iowa at home, beat VCU on a neutral, and that's just about it. North Carolina, which did take losses, oh, by the way, to Villanova, UConn, and Kentucky all on neutrals, it did beat Tennessee. It beat Oklahoma, which missed, oh, by the way. I don't think there's actually a great wide golf in that. And, and as you're running down the stats, GP, I don't know if you said this or not. Um, and we would side on this on this issue. Like I, I I said it last week, so we don't and we don't have you know forever on this pod tonight. Um, if the committee wants to do it, I actually think it's a it's a net positive for the sport to do this. But in Iowa State's case, I disagree because Iowa State wound up playing in a league that was so good and so strong that its overall strength of schedule made the non-con part of it moot. Iowa State was 16 and, and UNC was 31. So UNC got dragged down a little bit by the ACC. Iowa State got way boosted up by the Big 12 and it proved it. I mean, to me, the thing that bothers me is I understand it's just one data point, but like Iowa State destroyed Houston at a level that we did not think conceivable prior to that Big 12 championship game on Saturday. And I again, let me reinforce this. I understand it's just one data point in the entire season. And so it's not that big, but I, I will not be convinced that uh, after seeing what Iowa State did to clinch its season, that it winds up in the two. And then the byproduct of all this is that, GP, the East is freaking loaded, dude. UConn, the best team in the country, gets, the, in my opinion, the best two. UConn's the, I mean, Iowa State's the best two. Then it gets Auburn as a four. And the reason why Auburn was the four is because it lacked the quad one wins, but it's a top five team at Ken Palm. You've got them. You've got BYU, which has been a top 15 team all season long in the metrics. Illinois looking as dangerous as any team on the three line right now. Iowa State, the best two. An FAU team that has Final Four experience potentially waiting for you in the second round. I don't think there's any case to be made against the East and its strength overall. And the bracketing principles that were in play here, um, I said it early in the show on, on Sunday on HQ. I just, I would love to truly know when they get this final bracket, if everyone takes a beat, steps back, everyone just like looks at the bracket, everyone in the room, shut up, everyone just look at this for five minutes. Okay. Then convene and say, does this make sense? Do we really want to put the best team in the tournament, the number one overall seed with the number two team, that's a top five team in predictive metrics, with uh, a team on the four line, that's a top five team in predictive metrics, with a team on the three line that won its conference tournament and is operating as a borderline top 10 team. Um, it's just a little too tilted and particularly on that side, GP, because you've got the East and then you got the West, which just happens to be the weakest. So that's, um, those are my thoughts on, uh, on Iowa state one seed, two seed conversation overall. You are right. What you said at the top of this is that we typically come on here and we say, Hey, listen, you know, I could nitpick this nitpick that, but broadly speaking, I think they did a pretty good job and picking the teams. I should be clear. I think they did a pretty good job. I got 66 of 68 for whatever that's worth. Jerry Palm also got 66 of 68. I think once the bubble shrank, and the committee chair did make it clear, we had five bid stealers. He called New Mexico a bid stealer. So Outrageous, by the way, that New Mexico. Uh, by the way, outrageous. Yes, of course. Insane. It, it, I, 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 what I don't want to do on this pod is spend 20 minutes bitching about the seeds. But l let me just roll this real quick because I got it on my sheet here, man. Dude, I, I can't remember the last time 
And apologies that this mic isn't working the right way. I can't remember the last time I had this many issues with seeds. I'm just going to roll through them here. FAU is an eight is an absolute joke, just the same way that MSU is a nine is a joke. These teams have no business being on this line whatsoever. Did they not watch FAU the final two weeks of the season? So here are my issues. FAU is an eight. Duquesne is an 11, but I think I get why that actually had to happen for seeding and bracket purposes because BYU got dropped to a six instead of a five because it can't play on Sundays and all that. Michigan State is a nine. New Mexico as an 11 is... It actually like damages the committee's credibility that you would put that team on the 11 line. Uh, Dayton has a seven, a little too high. JMU is a 12. Get get that nonsense out of my face. Uh, worse than 11. Uh, Boise State going to Dayton. I, I, I will never understand the fact that the Mountain West sent two, and that's in our poll. Vote on it, and we'll give you results here later in the show. Two teams from the Mountain West going to Dayton. Colorado State and Boise State have no business being on the 10 line, but being that far down. And then Utah State has an eight. Um, real, real real issues with what the committee did with the Mountain West. The committee chair did say that to me on my interview with him, that basically the majority of the league's wins came from in the league. And so they essentially used that against them. That I have a major issue with that because they seem to treat the Mountain West separately from the rest of the leagues. And that thinking did not apply A to A across the board everywhere else. So um, yeah, I, I feel like the committee should be held to task here. Is it atrocious? No, but there are some there are some matchups that are an outrage. And, and New Mexico against Clemson, what's that line up to, right? I honestly don't know, but I know that they're a favorite, and Clemson got absolutely – this is the thing. You hurt the other team, man. Clemson should not have to play New Mexico as a first-round game. That is a a six versus eight. <laughs> like, And it's not, it's not a 6-11, I'll tell you that much. Rant over. Yeah, the, like again, they I think they did okay picking the teams because once the bubbles shrink, as somebody who was sitting here in the same hotel room this afternoon, really putting pen to paper and looking through it. I was like, Jesus, I don't know what to do here. Like it got to the five. Like it was like, I got about six teams and I got three spots and I guess I'll go here, here and here. But man, I could easily see somebody else going with these other three. Um, that part of the job got hard. Picking the the last at larges got really hard for them, I assume, because it was hard for me. And I sat with Jerry Palm all day. I know it was hard for him. Uh, the seating is inexplicable. And I'm not the guy who comes on every year and says, ah, they don't know how to seed this thing, but they really messed up the seeding. And we'll get to more of that stuff later. But the biggest example of that is just to circle right back to the top. It's, it's, I guess I thought you should be a one. You're actually a two. Perhaps that's not the biggest example. Cause I thought Florida Atlantic could maybe be out and they got an issue. <laughs> I thought they could maybe be I out. I thought Michigan state could be out, but yeah, FAU is an eight. Uh, oh, yeah. So maybe, maybe Iowa state isn't the biggest problem in terms of seating, but it's the one at the top of the bracket that is most noticeable. And I, 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 Again, I promise we'll move on, but I just want to put a button on this. As you were talking through Iowa State, you said things like, you know, outside of the league, they did this and this. I don't care what they did outside of the league any more than what I care they did inside of the league. The, all the selection committee tells me every year, you know what they tell USF? You know what they tell South Florida? They say, we don't care what you did in your league. That doesn't your body matter. Of work. It's your whole body of work. How can you look at South Florida and stress that the only thing that matters is your entire body of work and then turn around and look at uh, Iowa State and say, we're going to make you eighth in the pecking order because of your non-league strength of schedule. If you were really talking about big body of work, total body of work, why wouldn't you look at total strength of schedule? At which point Iowa State's in the top 20 in America, higher than North Carolina. I understand that non-league strength of schedule is a part of the selection process. It is now my life's goal, mission, <laughs> to get it removed. It doesn't belong there. Judge people on what they accomplish. And guess what? If somebody doesn't schedule aggressively, and then because of that, they don't accomplish much, and you leave them out of the tournament, then say, you know what? You probably should have scheduled more aggressively, and then maybe you'd have given yourself better opportunities. Leave that up to the coaches. And if coaches are smart enough to think they know how to game the system now, let them give it a try. Yeah. Let him give it a try. Yeah, that uh, I don't want to get us too off the sidetrack, but I saw a little bit of that going out there tonight. The idea that you can get that you now want to schedule nine patsies and are going to beat them by twenty eight points. Just see how that Go goes for you. Go do it. Just see how that goes. It's it that, that is way easier said than done. And oh, by the way, Oklahoma is not in the field. Okay, Oklahoma fell victim to this as well, and I have no issue with Oklahoma not making the field. So there is no, you know, skeleton key to getting this done. No. You want to, you want to schedule terribly? Like uh, it the, the, will absolutely backfire on nine teams out of 10. That's exactly right. Like everybody thinks they've got the, like the secret tool now, like, Ooh, I, we figured out. And if they're going to gain the system, we'll gain the system. You know what? 
if you think Iowa State beating everybody in the non-league by a million is, quote, gaming the system, like just, okay, maybe they made that look easy. You know what else they made look easy? Beating Houston by 20, all right? Maybe none of this stuff is as easy as Iowa State makes it look. But if you want to go try it, go try it. I don't care. I just think once we get into the room and we're picking this bracket and we're seeding it, non-league strength of schedule goes runs counter to everything they say is supposed to be important. They are literally taking a fraction of your season and emphasizing it, and then literally in the next press saying, well, don't just tell us about your conference record. Don't just tell us about where you finished in your conference. Don't just fill, tell us about your last 10 games. We look at the entire thing. Well, then why are you punishing Iowa State for this not entire thing? Rant over. I just think it's ridiculous. Iowa State will get wherever they were going to get no matter what, I yep. guess. But um, for them to be eighth, ranked eighth by the selection committee, mm-hmm. is just – there's literally nobody else on the planet who could evaluate – resume sensibly it's truly like nobody would have the mate. nobody would have the mate i didn't realize so you know i'm on the set i'm watching i'm on the air but we got the way it's pocketed like occasionally i get like three minutes to watch the, the selection show uh and the, and the feed coming from headquarters there and i i just assumed iowa state was the number one two and so it's like 45 minutes in and then i thought i was like i didn't believe it man no i was like the the last two seed it was closer to the three line than the one line. No, it's, it's, truly, it's, just it's wrong. truly mind boggling. It's just wrong. It's just wrong. And a decision made by people who were either not focused enough or clearly focused on the wrong things. 